everyone, it's Maria, and today I'm going to do a very quick library haul for you while I wait for my kids to come back from a sleepover. We helped my in-laws move to town this weekend, so they're actually going to finish moving this week. If you live in town with your in-laws, especially ones that are really awesome but very much tidier than you are, please put advice in the comments. Uh, so anyway, that is what I'm up to, and that's why I'm going to try and rush through this, but I wanted to get a library haul into you because I was able to go to the library and just meander, which is the best library hauls, because then I get such a wide range of things that I get excited about, so you'll have fun, hopefully. All right, first up is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. This is by Gail Honeyman, and I actually had this on hold. It was my only hold which is shocking. <laughs> uh, Books and Jams, Krista is leading a discussion group over at Goodreads on this, so I plan on picking this up and joining in. I barely ever get to do that. So, Next, we have my first, it's not trashy, I don't know. It might be trashy, I don't know. I have only read two romance novels before. They were both Danielle Steele books that my grandma gave me when I was 12, which is maybe not the most appropriate thing, but... I have been kind of curious lately, so I thought I would pick up this one. Alice Clayton has gotten some buzz, so the redhead plays her hand. I have no idea. I did like that on the back it talks about a fiery debate about the message of Thin is In and people slamming her curves while she's trying to down the hate arrayed. I don't know. Maybe there's going to be some feminist issues in here, and I like that, so we'll find out. I don't know. I'm not a romance reader. Again, if you have thinking romancy books that you'd like to put in the comments, I'm game. Next up, we have A Perilous Path, Talking Race, Inequality, and the Law by Sherilyn Iffel, Loretta Lynch, Brian Stevenson. Uh, I didn't even notice that before. Anthony C. Thompson. Uh, this is about race, obviously, uh, and injustice in the law. I love Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy. It was one of my favorites nonfiction reads a while back. So I'm excited to pick this up. Plus it's super short. So I feel like I'll actually read it. We've been kind of busy lately. Next is A Girl's Guide to Joining the Resistance, a feminist handbook on fighting for good by Emma Gray. So I assume that it's exactly what they say. Again, this looks very, very short. Uh, chapters include how to stop watching Netflix, get off your couch and get stuff done. Um, Dear White Ladies, a note on intersectionality. We'll find out. <laughs> this one I'm excited about because I picked up the Blue Planet Part 2 DVDs. And I thought, I'm kind of in an oceany mood. I'm reading Spineless about jellyfish. So this is Deep Blue Home, an intimate ecology of a wild ocean by Julia Witte. Not too long. Maybe I'll... I, I was in a sciencey mood when I went today. This one... I had to get it because of the title. That's what she said. Wise wood words from influential women by Kimothy. Kimothy, that's an interesting name. Kimothy Joy. And it's got watercolors in it, it looks like. So score. I like that. And that's what she said jokes are my favorite jokes. Period. Uh, weather from Cloud Atlases to Climate Change and Illustrated History by Andrew Revkin with Lisa McKelly. Uh yeah, I, again, I was in a sciencey mood. I've been thinking about climate change and the environment, probably because of April, so I thought I would pick that up. Plus, the weather's changing. Maybe that makes sense. This one, because Mother's Day's next week, and Wild Moms, Motherhood in the Animal Kingdom by Dr. Karen Bonder. I thought that just sounded fun. I don't even know if I'll read straight through it, but I don't know. Moms, I get all sentimental around Mother's Day. This one I picked up because we are in the 1800s for homeschool, and so we're starting to look at kind of things that changed, whether it was invention, uh, evolution, those kinds of things. So I picked up Evolution, the Story of Life on Earth, illustrated by Kevin Cannon and Xander Cannon by Jay Hostler. This is a graphic novel history of evolution. Uh, I feel a tiny bit out, out of my depth. I've read some books on evolution. I did not grow up. Uh, being taught evolution. Other than that, it was not the way to go. So I feel a little bit uh, wobbly. So I wanted to pick up some kind of refresher courses. This one, again, we're saying the 1800s and Trail of Tears is coming out. So I wanted to pick up Atlas of Indian Nations by Anton Truer. I did check this particular gentleman who wrote this and well compiled it. 
is himself a Native American, so I appreciate that. I love the illustrations. We might do some drawings uh, to go along with it. I love the maps, so that's why I got that. A lot of times when I'm doing picking out my homeschool books, I won't just look in the kids section. I'll try and get maybe one or two adult books too, just to kind of have them around to reference whether we actually read through them or not. I I'm interested in the subject, so we'll find out. Then we have the Time Traveler's Handbook, 18 Experiences from the Eruption of Vesuvius to Woodstock by Willie Acton and Goldblatt. Uh, I love, first of all, the cover. It was orange and pretty, and I thought, hmm, and Time Traveler's books, I love them. Ruth Goodman does some really great ones. Uh, I just really like the idea of a book that puts you back in a time period. I've always fantasized about that, so this is why I picked that up. Then next up we have What We Lose, a novel by Zinzi Clemens. This is short, which is one reason I picked it up. I have not been able to read long novels lately just because life. <laughs> uh, this is about a woman's experience who is both South, Af South African and American. Uh, she had her, her mother grew up in Johannesburg, South Africa, and she's kind of struggling with what it means to be both. I've been listening to so many podcasts uh, done by black women and kind of the the struggle back and forth between feeling like an African, feeling like an American, uh, and, and how to navigate that. So I thought this would be kind of a fun read, or at least a uh, inspiring, insightful read. That's the word I'm looking for. Next up is Human Acts by Han King. I have not read The Vegetarian yet. I know everybody else did. I don't know why I haven't read it yet. Maybe because I feel like we have a lot of vegetarians around the house anyway. <laughs> That's a stupid reason. I don't know. I liked the cover. It was short. Uh, and I thought I would, I would just try it out. And if I like it, then I will read The Vegetarian. Next, I picked up All Things Must Fight to Live, Stories of War and Deliverance in Congo by Brian M Mueller. There were a lot of books on refugee stories and genocide survivor stories. I don't know why I felt I felt like picking them all up and I know I can't do that uh, for myself especially right now when my brain's already on overload with the end of school year and my in-laws moving and life altering everything right now so what I probably will do with this is just read through it a little bit at a time interspersing it with other reads that are not related to this at all because I know it will be hard for me to read so uh, this is another one. Emily Cook on ARG Schooling always talks about these, and I generally will pick them up, and I don't ever really get through them, but the cartoon history of the modern world from the Bastille to Baghdad. Again, we're very much in a history mindset right now. My kids have been watching this Amazon Prime short series. Uh, it was a web series originally called Napoleon Bon Appetit. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, it's worth looking up. They're like three to six minutes long. They're very much not educational. They're not good at teaching you how to cook. However, they're funny. There is some innuendo in it. My kids don't understand the innuendo yet, so I don't really feel awful showing it to them. They're kind of at that weird window of, hey, you could watch this and you won't understand some of that stuff that's going on underneath. But I don't know. I got it on the, on the to watch just because I thought, oh, Napoleon. They definitely have a caricature of Napoleon in their brains now. So and then the last one I picked up was How to Be a Victorian, A Dawn to Dusk Guide to Victorian Life by Ruth Goodman. I've really appreciated the other books I've read by her. She likes to look at the day-to-day -day life, not necessarily the big, the big people or places or events, but what life was like. And honestly, those are the things that I think draw students and people into history. My kids uh, <laughs> have been looking at some of our genealogy scrapbooks that I've put together of stories of their ancestors from the 1800s and that has been such a cool way to introduce daily life to them they understand general stores a little bit better they understand the idea of a fairy uh, people who really had to make decisions about where to invest money because uh, one of one of their great grandfathers invested money into a fairy even though it would originally kind of undercut some of his business it brought more business for his general store in later. So it's just interesting things like that that you don't really think about when you're reading about uh, the 1800s. Just you kind of think Civil War, War of 1812. But honestly, that wasn't most of the 1800s. It was all the little daily things that affected their lives. So that 
is my library haul. Uh, I would love to hear if you know about any of these, have questions, thoughts. Uh, I have a couple more books on my own shelves that I'm trying to get to. I'm hoping my reading picks up again, but lately we've just been swamped with life changes. I don't know. Again, if you have ever lived in a town with your parents or in-laws, I would love any advice you have other than established boundaries. We're, we're trying to figure that out. <laughs> I will talk to you later. Bye.